What's going on with the Minnesota Vikings? Let's use this opportunity on April Fool's Day to talk about why Bo Nix should go first overall in the NFL draft. Now I'm, I'm, I'm messing with you guys, but let's actually talk about what's kind of going on with the Minnesota Vikings, a catch up show, so to speak. What should we be looking for? What do we currently know? And we'll do some listener questions. Let's just have a little bit of fun here on this April fool's day. Welcome to the real Forno show. Welcome to the Real Forno Show, hosted by Tyler Fornis, publisher at the Sporting News, contributor on Score North's Purple Daily, publisher of Substack Run In Shooter, the host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hungry on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, and a founding member of Vikings first and score. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of The Real Forno Show. I'm your host, Tyler Fornis. With me, as always, is producer Dave. Please let us know if you can hear a little bit of cracking when Dave talks. I can hear it in my headphones, but we're trying to figure out if there's a more in-depth audio issue. Um, listen, if I was leaving first and school to do stand up, Justin, I don't think I'd make very much money. Let's just be real. A couple jokes here and there is my forte. Uh, doing a whole stand up routine, like the good stand up comics, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Let me tell you, it's pretty impressive what they can do. But let me, um, I'm not that guy. But let's have some fun here today. We're, we're just going to talk kind of big picture stuff. We're going to talk about what's going on with the Minnesota Vikings. What does make sense what doesn't matter at all and everything in between and we'll take some questions at the end but i do want to start off as dave rolled a brand new intro video i am officially done with vikings wire i was done last night at midnight and today i started with the sporting news covering the minnesota vikings along with the seattle seahawks and los angeles rams it's you forgot the ravens um, Ravens, I might not be doing anymore. That's up in the air. So bird teams. Yeah, let's, uh, well, let's kind of, uh, jump into why, um, sporting news really doesn't have necessarily the reputation of covering teams. They kind of do more SEO focused stuff. They kind of do more big picture. They have like an NFL writer. They have an NFL draft writer, but what, the idea here is is to expand and have re- really focused team coverage and do the same thing. Oh, thank you, Gary. Gary thank can you, hear Gary. the crackling. I team. wanted to know that. Mm-hmm. Um, so Dave is going to take a look at that. And the idea is to do team focused coverage just like I was doing at Vikings Wire. And I loved my time at Vikings Wire. I feel like we built that into a great go-to site for Minnesota Vikings content. And that's what I want to do here. I want upward mobility. I want the ability to take things to another level, to be able to grow something organically rather than try and build something that somebody else started. This is me from the ground up. And I think it would be, it's going to be really cool to kind of see where this goes. And having a couple more sites means a couple more revenue streams for myself just to make sure while we get this thing going, there's enough money coming in to be able to, you know, live. So please go read all my stuff. It all makes a difference. And we are going to build this thing and make it great. It is going to be a good, good time. Dave, why don't you try talking again? Well, I was wanting to, to see if I'm coming across now. It's still there. Shit. <sighs> okay, stand by. All right. Well, while you do that, I am going to continue to talk. And listen, go check out the sporting news. Um, the, my, the team sites will be built here shortly. So th- there will be like a super Vikings um, specific site. And we're going to keep doing everything here. Nothing here is going to change. But the more subscribers we get, 
the more money we can generate and that will help me live. And I would appreciate that very greatly. So like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the fun things though. That helps make a difference for us. Is um, it still here? Can yep. you hear the crackling? All right. I'm going to reboot this. You okay. keep talking. Do you, first off, do you know about the history <clears throat> of the sporting news? A little bit. Um, I know that they've been around, I think, since the late 1800s um, as a print publication. And then they kind of took it and went digital because obviously in today's age, you have to be digital. If you're not digital, nothing matters. Holy crap. Odie just farted and it is rank in here. Oh, buddy. I love my Frenchie, but be you stinky. Um, so l- let's, let's kind of start here. I am. Yeah. I'm at the sporting news. You'll be able to find all my work there and nothing else will change. So <clears throat> let's, let's start by having a conversation kind of about where the Vikings are at with trading up and Dave, uh, I, I can now like hear some weird background stuff like a, an ambient noise. I'm hearing that too, but am I still crackling? No, but now it's not coming from your XLR mic. It's just coming from oh, your oh, whatever mic your computer uses. So, no, it should be should be this. I should be. Sounds like you sounds like you're in a bathroom. Really? Yeah. Strange. Very strange. I don't know what's going on, but um, I I think it's fair to say that uh, uh, we can blame some people in the chat for this. I think it's their fault. I really do. Oh, Dr. Proto says no crackle. So the crackle is gone. It's now you sound goofy. Uh, You sound like you're in like a weird space, but let, uh, while you kind of work on that, we'll try and figure out what's going on with the Vikings. So there've been rumors them them trading up for years and years and years. And by years, I mean weeks. So, they have the 11th overall pick. They acquired the 23rd overall pick a f- couple weeks ago. And by doing so, it gave them more ammunition to be able to make that trade up. Now, by getting that pick now, having multiple picks this year that are tangible, that you know what the asset is and what it can be versus a future asset is more appealing to teams. O to Odie. Norse Fias, that's pretty good. O to Odie. Um, and by having the ability to make that trade is going to make a big, big difference here moving forward. Now, are you going to be able to capitalize on that trade? Are you going to be able to actually make it happen? That's the big question that nobody seems to have the answer to. Why does nobody have the answer to it? Because the trade hasn't been made yet. There have been rumors that they have uh, a deal in place not necessarily a deal in place, but they've had conversations with teams like the Patriots, the Cardinals, the Chargers. Um, And do they have to get past the Giants to get a quarterback? There are just so many things that we just don't know. But what we do know is that they have had conversations for sure with number three overall in the New England Patriots. The New England Patriots have been not steadfast in anything other than ambiguity. They have talked about wanting to trade. They have talked about wanting to stand pat and take a quarterback. Nobody really knows what the Patriots want to do, and that's what makes this so, so interesting, Dave. Who the heck knows what's going on here? And that that's kind of the fun part about this. It's also the most annoying part when you're in the Minnesota Vikings and the fan base because you're trying to figure out what the Vikings are going to do, and then that just gets people's brains riled up. It gets people dis discussing things uh, with the NFL draft. It gets people having conversations about this, that, and the other thing. And you get some pretty wild trade discussions. And let me tell you, some of these are pretty crazy. Um, Oh, it's it's only going to take us 11 and 23 to be able to get up to third overall. No, just because the original trade chart says that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen. Like it, it becomes a, an abyss for bad takes. Um, super chat from man juice one. 
top five name I think we may have ever seen in this chat. <laughs> Man Juice. Awesome. Uh, Man Juice says, I'm all for trading next year's first and our two firsts this year for Drake May. The 100 million in cap next year. I don't see a problem with it. Love the content. One, thank you, Man Juice. Two, don't ever change that handle. Phenomenal. Man Juice, it's just, it's perfect. Um, second, I agree with you. Now, if you watch my appearance on Purple Daily on Draft from this afternoon, or you saw the clip that Declan posted on Twitter, I went bonkers on the idea that the Vikings um, should just wait on quarter on quarterback because waiting on quarterback is a draft analyst thing. Now there's merit to it when you're talking about it from a draft analyst perspective. I have all of these players in this bucket. I believe their futures are all very similar. So I would take them in the same spot. Well, yeah, you can talk about that when you're a draft analyst, but when you're talking about reality, when you're talking about running a football team, when you're talking about believing in a person who's going to come in for your organization and play football, it's not as simple as I think that they're on the same Delta plane. It's not as simple as I think their ceilings are, are in a similar spot. There's so many more nuances. And let me tell you, Kevin O'Connell, I believe has a guy. And I believe uh, this is circumstantial for me. Um, I believe that they are going to have multiple different um, quarterbacks that they are comfortable with. Now that's the key comfortable versus want. It's like, Oh, I want the ribeye. Oh, but they're out of ribeyes. Well, I guess I'll have a sirloin. Like th th that's kind of what we're talking about here. And if you have a guy that you want, just go get him. Go get him. Be aggressive. Go get that guy. And you know what? If you overpay, doesn't matter if you hit. Doesn't matter if you're right. No matter what, if you're wrong, you're probably fired anyways. So go get the guy you think you are going to be right on. Don't wait. Don't settle. You know what? J.J. McCarthy's a good prospect. But if you wait and you settle on J.J. McCarthy by trading up to five to get him instead of going getting Drake May or Jaden Daniels, who you believe in more, that's bad process. That is not prioritizing the most important position, arguably in all of sports. Quarterback's the most important position in all of sports because it can change the game more than any single position outside. Like you talk about soccer, it's 11 on 11. Like midfielders, strikers, defensemen, they can all score. Yeah, yeah, you have your your strikers. They're going to get the majority of the goals, but midfielders can e and easily take shots and score too. Baseball, well, what about a starting pitcher? Yeah, but they play one out of every five games. Like they start 32, 33 games a year. That's not exactly what I would call a massive impact. Yeah, it's a massive impact on the games they play, but if you stink in the other four-fifths of the season, who cares? Basketball. It's five on five. Each guy's a little bit more important, but it doesn't matter if you're a guard, center, or wing. If you're that good, it, like no one singular position is more important than another. It's how good you are. It's about how what you can do on the court. Our buddy, our buddy Drew might argue with you and say, no, hockey goalie is more important. But they only play 53, 54 games a year. The hockey goalie is very important when the playoffs come. But to get to the playoffs, you're using a platoon. It's it's two guys. One guy's usually playing 30 games. The other playing about well, 50. So in theory, the hockey goalie is just as important. But it's not just one guy. And that's part of the issue, Dave. Because if it's just one guy... Well, then if they're starting 82 games, then we can have a conversation, but that's not what we're doing here. The quarterback's the most important position in all of sports because it's one player starting every game, playing nearly every snap, unless there's a blowout or injury, and they may, can change the game more than anyone else. So when you're having that conversation, those things 
matter. Those things need to be taken into context. So I don't want to just wait on a guy. I don't want to just wait. Oh, let's see what, let's trade up to four. Let's see what Washington and New England will let us pick from. No, go get your guy. But you know what? If your guy is JJ McCarthy and you play things right and you only have to trade up to four or five, well, then that's smart business. But you're still prioritizing your guy. You just know how to maneuver the draft board. I I can understand that. But if your guy isn't, McCarthy and it's May or Daniels you do whatever you can to go get that guy and to me the idea of just standing pat and being patient and waiting and doing all this bullshit no be aggressive get him get that guy that's it go get that guy we haven't done it in the history of the Vikings Oh, dude, you're telling me. You are telling me. <sighs> it's frustrating. It's frustrating that the Vikings haven't been able to do it because the Vikings really haven't taken a quarterback in the top 10 in their entire history. Taking one at 11, Dante Culpepper. One at 12. Christian Ponder. They've also taken a couple other first round picks, including Teddy Bridgewater. 32. They moved up for Teddy. Yeah, never in the top 10. It's wild. I was taking a look at some research. Did you know that the Saints have only made one pick in the top 74 draft picks at quarterback in their history? Just one. Archie Manning. That's wild. Absolutely wild, Dave. Um, the Seahawks haven't made a, a pick in the top two rounds of the NFL drafted quarterback since Rick Meyer at second overall in 1993. Like looking at some of this data, like there are teams that have it on kind of the same level as the Vikings, but it's not exactly identical either. So, I'm really intrigued to see how everything's going to manifest. I'm really intrigued to see how things are going to matter once it comes to being able to go and get that guy. But we have to stop this, this lunacy facade of, Hey, let's just, let's just take whatever leftovers we get and be happy with it. After that, go get your guy, do whatever it takes to get your guy. Now, Aaron asks, what percentage of QBs picked high are a bust? It is still, it happens, but it is still lower than QBs picked lower that are a bust. I've shown you on Tool Bloggers and other shows the ski slope graph of where people are draft. Like if I can find, I've got it somewhere. The quarterback one in particular and it, the opportunities for him not being a bust are higher the higher up in the draft you take them. The further you go down in the draft, the more likely they are to be a bust. It's just math. Yeah. <sighs> I'm trying to think of a good way to describe how hard it's to take a quarterback. It is so difficult to go take a quarterback that if you, if everybody on this watching the stream right now, right now it says we have 136 people watching one. Thank you very, very much Two, If I were to tell all of you to go make me a chocolate souffle right now, you have an hour to make me a chocolate souffle. How many of you do you think could realistically accomplish that feat? And this isn't meant to be insulting. A perfect souffle is one of the most difficult things a chef can do. If you can consistently nail a souffle, you are considered one of the best. It's so hard to make a souffle because it's so delicate. The process is difficult. You have to be really careful with how you use your ingredients. 
with you ha- it's almost like it uh, an, causing an avalanche on a mountain if you're too loud or too rough or you the cause some kind of vibrations that sucker can sink that's the closest comparison I can think of to how hard it is to completely nail the quarterback position. People thought Mitch Trubisky was going to be great. He only had one year as a starter, but he had so many things that were projectable. People thought Patrick Mahomes was a wild man who'd never be able to learn an NFL offense. Well, he's probably the best quarterback that's ever played football. Josh Allen had all these tools, no accuracy, no base underneath him. He was a wild west cowboy playing football well he's now a top three quarterback in the game there there are guys we've been so sure on remember jimmy clausen jimmy clausen felt like a sure thing five star out of sherman oaks california oaks christian high school goes to notre dame plays well for the irish he's a second round pick absolute turd of a football career it's amazing for how much we know we don't know jack squat and it's so difficult picking a quarterback the right quarterback is like making a chocolate souffle if you can do it hell yeah you are one of the best and you know more than us until then it's we're just going to have to deal with the difficulties now there's a couple questions that have popped up in the chat that i want to i want to address um, we're going to talk about Michael Penix because that's going to be the big next part of the conversation here. Um, Freddie asks, what's going to take to trade up into the top three? <sighs> Could take three firsts, realistically. It, I would not be shocked considering what I know the Vikings offered to get to three from 23 last year if they'd be willing to maybe match that, which I was told it was they had offered three firsts and two seconds to get up to 23 or to get up from 23 to three because they wanted Anthony Richardson. I don't know if, if they'd be willing to match that considering it's a shorter jump, but it's a very quarterback rich draft. So you have to take that in consideration based on historical precedent on how I was using the Rich Hill trade chart. There was no um, real quarterback tax with any form of consistency. Now, you could say, hey, this trade had a heavy quarterback tax, or this trade didn't. But over the course of a 13-year sample size, there was no quarterback tax when you leveled out everything, which I found fascinating. But it it just goes to show you, like, it's so hard to predict. Now, I'm going to find the question because this is going to be the next part of our conversation. M Sullivan um, asks what we think of what I think of Michael Pratt. And let's kind of have the conversation about um, that second tier of quarterbacks. Now, all of my top eight have a school search about them. The top, uh, the consensus top six guys, Caleb Williams, Drake may Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, Michael Penix, Jr. Bo Nix all have their own episode. Spencer Rattler and Michael Pratt have a combo episode. So those players are, I think they're worthy of day one or day two picks, except Bonex. I would not touch till day three. And even then, I don't think I want it. That what I said earlier, the niceties. Yeah, that's an April fool's joke. It's it is April 1st. So Pratt is interesting. I think if he had, a better bill of health and a little bit more juice on his arm. I think you could talk about him as a potential round one guy. Cause I, I came away very impressed with him on multiple levels, but truth be told, I think yeah, he's going to end up in that Jalen hurts bucket. He's not the type of runner or athlete that hurts is, but that developmental, I want to see if I can work with you to build up a, an NFL offense around you. And I like that idea with Michael Pratt. I also don't think that it's very, for lack of a better term, plausible at this point because it, there are just so many, so many different factors. Um, Chris asks, why is it so hard to be successful quarterback? Is it primarily the mental side of the game? I feel the physical attributes shouldn't be that hard to correct or 
uh, fit to scheme. I think one of the easiest ways to kind of relate it, it's like, look at the three point contest. It's easy to hit a three when nobody's in your face, when you don't have to move and then set your feet and then fire or pop a shot, um, just set up and, and shoot the ball. It's a lot easier to do it when nobody's around, when you don't have to move, when you can really get, take the time to set your feet and fire second. Somebody's in your face. It, everything changes. Mike Tyson had the line. You have a game plan until you get punched in the face. Well, once you get punched in the face, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That's, that's a question that you need to have an answer to. That's a question that, is going to kind of resonate when you're having a, this talk about quarterbacks. So when I look at quarterbacks here and how I look at each of these players and how I look at the overall skill sets and try to predict who, what there are things that we're starting to see as trends that say, Hey, this guy is going to, or won't succeed. One of those things is the pressure to sack rate. Being over 20% in the pressure to sack rate is, is kind of a, like a threshold that say, Hey, we have a problem here. And here's what pressure to sacks means. Every quarterback gets pressured. How many of those pressures turn into sacks? If you're above 20%, one out of five, that's bad. That is the danger zone. Kenny Loggins sang about it in Top Gun. And that's one of the things that you're having conversations with when you're talking about projecting out quarterbacks. Another thing is it's accuracy, but it's not the stat. It's not, I completed this many percent of my passes. It is how accurate are you at throwing the football? Are you hitting your benchmarks? Are you getting the ball there with enough velocity? Are you throwing it in a catchable position there are advanced metrics like adjusted accuracy that be are able to answer that question a lot better. But there is there's so many little things where it, a guy can throw an accurate football, and have adjusted accuracy of like eighty percent, but only have like a sixty three percent completion percentage because there's a lot of different factors. Your receivers might just not be able to deal with contested catches. They might drop a bunch of balls. Drake may was top 10 in most drops this year, 24 drops by his receivers this year. That's two a game. That's that ends up adding up to be a lot. It doesn't necessarily feel like it, but that's a lot. And that those are just ones that are categorized as drops. If the ball hits you when you're extending out and it should be a catch, but you just don't make it, that's not classified as a drop, which is why a guy like Xavier worthy from Texas had more drops than or had less drops than you would have thought because of some of those things. So when I kind of take a look at all of these things, there really is no blueprint of what makes or doesn't make a quarterback because we just don't know. Everybody is so different and everybody's ability is just so completely different than what than the next guy. And then you have to factor in all the variables that we even haven't mentioned the circumstances behind the team that they're going to the offense that they're playing in. Is it a good fit? Who knows? I don't have that answer. You don't have that answer and you have to be able to figure that out. So there's just no it's a, really answer your question chris there's no real blueprint you have to have these qualities now bill parcells had you had to be a 3 year starter you had to be a captain you had to uh, be at, i think it was like like at least 6 foot 3 and you had to have started i think 30 games in college was the threshold there, there are people that, that believe some of that stuff, but even that hasn't translated. Like, 
there's just so many things that we just don't know. And all those variables make it so hard to get quarterback. Right. And with each prospect, I like Bryce young was a gamer, but he didn't really have a lot of that next level stuff. The elite arm, the elite processing and decision-making and I'm sorry. He, he had uh, some pretty good processing decision making, but he didn't have any plus athletic traits. So when he got into a uh, jam, how are you going to get out of it? How are you going to be able to elevate your team? Or are you just a guy that's that plays great when your surroundings are? That was really the discussion with Bryce young. And it turns out that he needed those surroundings to be pretty good. Well, guy like Anthony Richardson doesn't. He doesn't need those things because he can elevate with his legs. He can elevate with his arms. And by being able to do those things, it makes it a big difference to be able to take things to another level. And what, what happens with one guy being, oh, he's a hyper athlete. He's going to be able to bail you out. He's going to be able to do this, that, or the other thing. Well, that was Malik Willis. Malik Willis hasn't translated. Anthony Richardson sure looks like he's going to. Then you have CJ Stroud, who is kind of like above average traits across the board, but he wasn't really an elite athlete. He wasn't really an elite passer. Like he didn't have like elite level arm strength. Yeah, he just went to a uh, Kyle Shanahan system and uh, was one of the best. So it, it, there's just, even within the general archetypes, one, one guy may work and one guy may not. And that's what makes it so difficult. It's so hard to get quarterback, right? You talk to any draft analyst, you talk to any GM and you get honest opinions on, Hey, this is what I want to do a quarterback. This is what I thought about this player. This is what I thought about that player. Well, let me tell you, you could be right about one wrong about the other. And that is, that makes us very hard. Very, very hard. Okay. Quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Out of teams, and they're discussing busts in the remarks. Yeah. And there was a good question I highlighted. Uh, M. Sullivan, J- why is J.J. McCarthy so polarizing? We'll get to that. But I want to, out of the teams and busts, the situation the quarterback is going into, you just hit on it, is mm-hmm. how do the Vikings play into that scenario? Versus, say, the Washington Commanders or the other top teams in this draft. So when we're having that conversation about J.J. McCarthy, so let, let's start there and then we'll kind of get into situations and why situations matter so much. Why I think the Vikings can nurture any quarterback and be able to get get them in a great spot. So McCarthy is so polarizing because he has such a limited body of work in a different way than Drake may does McCarthy. I believe has two more starts than Drake may in his career, but it's what they were asked to do. That makes it so difficult to really be able to have a genuine conversation. Drake may was asked to be Superman. He was asked to be the guy at all times. He was asked to put the team on his back and carry him. And he couldn't do it all the time. But when he could, oh, buddy, was it good. It was awesome. The difference with J.J. McCarthy is he was, wasn't was asked to do it. And it, it, due to no fault of his own. But it, it adds an interesting variable. One that I'm just not 100% sure on. So McCarthy was asked so little to really take control of his team. Um, I think my wife is home. Odie is just very excited. He, yeah, we can hear him. Yep. Um, and because he wasn't asked to do everything for his team, he wasn't asked to do a lot. You just have a limited sample size on McCarthy. 
That doesn't mean he can't do it. That doesn't mean he will be bad at it. A limited sample size just adds to the variable where he was never really asked to put the team on his back. Well, you're going to have to do that in the NFL. So if you weren't asked to do that a lot in college, it makes it harder to transition to being able asked to do that in the National Football League. All that matters. All that matters when you're having these conversations. And I think that that's why he's so polarizing because the things that you're going to be asking him to do in the NFL are just stuff. You don't have a ton of sample size on. Like when I look at Drake may, he's got some messy footwork at times. I can fix footwork. I can't fix some of the stupid throws he makes down the field that just are insane. It's like a trick shot golfer. Oh, 50 yards out. I can hit that. No problem. And then he just does like, it's stuff like that. It's just bonkers. Like some of those Josh Allen throws when he's on the move and he just throws like a laser 50 yards down the field. That's the kind of stuff Drake may can do. And I can't teach that. I can teach you how to drop back. I can teach you how to play with good pocket presence. Like to me, that is, that's kind of the difference here. Like with McCarthy, you just don't have, have a big sample size of him being asked to shoulder the load. And I think that's what it boils down to. Man juice. I uh, I'll dive into that because you were nice enough to give us a super chat and a, a reminder to everybody that super chats will is a guarantee to get your questions answered. So, Let's uh let's talk about that. Um when he's raw, he just has been asked to do it a lot. And if you haven't been asked to do it a lot, that's kind of the same thing as raw. Like you just need more experience doing it. Odie, you are just fine, you turkey butt. He doesn't like being in a room when mom is home and he always wants to go see her. He'll be fine. Um I, I think that's what it means by raw. It's hey. Like if you just look at their schedule this year, he threw the ball 10 times against Penn state and they won by nine. Well, they won. So are you really going to be mad at JJ McCarthy only throwing 10 times? I don't really think it's a big deal, Dave. Why? Well, they won. (laughs) They didn't need to throw the football. They ran it down their throats. And that's what makes it so, so interesting here. They like, we just need more, more, more opportunities to answer these questions. And I think that we're going to be able to get that. I think that we're going to be able to try and figure that out, but it's a really difficult one. So I just think it's the lack of sample size for McCarthy. That's what they mean by raw. And I think raw is an overused term in general. Because raw can be used for so many different things. But in this sense, raw is, he just hasn't done it a lot. And that's not really his fault, which is what makes it such an interesting discussion point. Okay. I want to answer this question from John because I think it's interesting. It says, hey, Forno, if you were the Viking staff, what would you do? Which QB would you move up to get? Uh, oh, that's easy, John. Um, if... Um, I've talked about a lot. Drake may Drake may is the guy Drake may has all the pluses of being able to kind of carry your team and be able to take things to another level and be able to make those Superman plays. I just need to work with him on his footwork. I'm okay with working with him on his footwork because I get some of the, the other elements down. Yeah, I know Odie. Uh, You'll be sad if Drake may doesn't come either. How would you answer that? He has a lower accuracy, accuracy, percentage than the other top QBs in the Oh, some of that is, I think, air raid based. Some of that is poor coaching. Uh, look, air, uh, JT O'Sullivan, uh, creator of the QB school, said this. Air raid footwork is very loose. It's not super structured. In the NFL, he's going to get a, a very structured footwork lesson. And I think that is going to be really key for him when it comes to being able to really fix that issue. 
I, I just think he had really bad coaching and he played in some really poor offensive structures, especially when we're talking about translating to the NFL level. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm uh that that's exactly where I'm at here. Lone Wolf, uh, if you disagree, I suggest you go back and look up the Drake May Skull Search episode. Tyler did watch many games Mm -hmm. breaking down the tape along with other inputs that he puts into it to look at and grade each of these quarterbacks. I suggest you go watch that. Look at the Skull Mm -hmm. Search series on Vikings first and Skull, and you can find the Drake May one. Also, um, Lone Wolf, uh, Bo Nix is not the most winning quarterback in NCAA history. He has the most starts in NCAA history. I believe the winningest quarterback in NCAA history is still Kellen Moore, who finished his uh, career 50 and three. Um, yeah. Uh, o- Odie is uh, talking to you, Dr. Proto. He is, yeah, he is, he is a big fan of Drake May. He's going to be real sad if he doesn't come to Minnesota, but yeah, I, I, I talked numerous, numerous times on Bo Nix and all these top quarterbacks. They all have their own skull search episodes. High, 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 high recommend you go check those out. They're evergreen until the NFL draft. Like this is, I did the, the tape research. I studied them. I gave them a grade and you know what? If you go to my Twitter profile, my pin tweet is my NFL draft database, which that database is filled with links to all my scouting reports, including all the quarterbacks, a hundred of them. Dave, I hit a hundred. 100 players I have scouted. I know. Good stuff. Yeah, I know, Odie. I should be at 150. I don't need a reminder, okay? Um, yeah. We are... He's telling you you're slacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a couple more um, more questions here before we go. Um, friendly reminder, Super Chats will get your questions answered first. So, um, it's... There isn't a ton of Vikings news right now, and it's kind of that weird dead period. Uh, They did meet with Michael Penix Jr. and do a private workout after his pro day. Don't read into that other than they're just doing their due diligence. And yeah, Uh, I'm I'm not reading into it. Uh, If they didn't do a um, a private workout with Michael Penix Jr., I think that was a problem more than if they're doing one. They're just they're just dotting all their eyes and crossing their t's. Uh, Lone Wolf. John talks about how Darnold has the tools to be a good quarterback. He hasn't developed them yet. Yeah. Even when he went to San Francisco, there may be some progress. But yeah, he may be the answer. Well, we'll see. I don't think. I don't think he's enough of an answer for Quasi mm-hmm. and KOC to hook their wagon to. To get without trying to get their QB. And I think that's the difference. Yeah. Um, it's my, my brain is just absolutely fried. You were talking about Darnold. Yeah. There's so many ifs about Darnold and the way I relate it to is this Darnold has all the ability to be a good quarterback. He's just not. Can you ever get him to be a good quarterback? It's like giving a, like a filet mignon to somebody who doesn't know how to cook and they char it. Like that, that's just kind of what Darnold is. He's just never been able to figure out how to cook the filet. Well, he, I don't know. We'll find out. I think if there's ever a chance it's now because of, of what you said, Dave surroundings, another super chat from our boy man juice thoughts on JJ throwing 61 miles an hour, third highest ever. Cool. I think that's pretty sweet. I, I thought he had more zip on the football than a lot of people did. I didn't really have an issue with his arm strength. Like some people did on film. Like this guy can zip it in, in the intermediate. Like that's good enough for me. He can throw a deep ball. Like I'm fine with it. I'm fine with him and how he's able to kind of accomplish some of those things. I it like, it doesn't really bother me. It bothers some people. Some people just think he just has a baby arm. Nah, I think his arm is just fine. Look, is it great? Is it elite? No. It's more than capable. I mean, Kirk Cousins had an arm that was more than capable. It was above average. 
I'd say JJ McCarthy's is in a tier with Kirk Cousins as far as arm strength. That's more than enough. Like, it, would you like to have the Uber arm strength? Yeah. But you don't have to have it. You have to have a lot of other things, but you have to at least pass a threshold of arm strength. And to well, me, throwing 60 I, miles an hour, I don't know if Kirk could throw 60 miles an hour. I, I also don't read a ton into that because remember, like, Deshaun Watson only threw, I think he was at like 51 or 52. Nobody had any real, like there were some questions like, Hey, does he have a strong enough arm? I think before his shoulder injuries. Yeah. He's, he was just fine. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just don't read in a ton into the arm strength thing. I think it's a good thing. It's like a 40 being a four, four or four, five. Either way, you're still fast. Like, how much does it matter to be that one-tenth of a second faster? Depends on the position you play. And to me, 61 versus 58. Um, man, just, it, here, here's the thing on that. Hitting 61 on a radar gun in that setting is different than throwing on the field. Like, it, you kind of train for that, and that's why some of these combine measurements, like, hey, it's good. I think it's good. I uh, Like, objectively, Awesome but that doesn't necessarily mean it's great on an overall level. So that's, that's. And the quarterback should be able to layer and touch a ball in as well. John Elway and Brett Favre were known for their fastballs and being able to throw a football through a center block ball, mm-hmm. but it took them a while to learn to add that touch so they could win. And Lone Wolf, you can have your opinion about me. That's absolutely wonderful. And you may be 100% correct. Mm-hmm. But we're going with what we've got. And that's what's fun about being a Vikings fan, is we can each have our own personal favorites. Me, I have to like J.J. McCarthy. I hope we get him. But who knows? Mm-hmm. All right. That's our show. Thank you guys so much for joining us here tonight. Um, Lone Wolf, if hey, if you've got scouting reports and these guys, send them over. I'd love to read them. We can talk about it. Um, Wednesday, we'll be back. Topic to be determined. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that come out between now and then. You'll be able to read all my opinions on the sporting news. Um, and once that team page is built, it's going to be awesome and i'm really excited to kind of see how things continue to grow and develop there and be able to build something from the ground up i think that rules so you can check out all my stuff there having a pretty good first day um not the views i was used to seeing at vikings wire but that every site's different on how they kind of track things so i'm okay with that in the meantime thank you guys very much for joining don't forget to if you haven't yet you can check out two old bloggers uh on either the YouTube channel or it's on the podcast feed. You'll want to check that out. We'll be back Wednesday to continue talking about the future of the Minnesota Vikings. And we can't wait to see you until next time. Make sure you like subscribe, ring the bell. So, you know, whenever we post anything, including surprise videos, shorts, and of course our regular scheduled content. I'm Tyler. He's Dave. Thank you very much. And skull Vikings, baby. Skull Vikings. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notifications. It helps us grow this community that we all love our Minnesota Vikings. And on behalf of Tyler Fornis and myself, Dave Stefano, thank you so dearly for watching The Real Forno Show. Skull, everyone!